Hi, second grade champions. We're continuing to read kittens in the kitchen. And um, I believe the kittens are kind of settled for the night. And Mandy is now home and she's trying to um, come up with a plan on how she's going to find homes for four kittens. Chapter three, page 32. Dr. Adam glanced up from the television as Mandy wandered in. The living room was low with wooden beams, a big stone fireplace, and cozy red pattern rugs on the old stone floor. It was a cold evening and a log crackled. Got any homework, he asked. I've already done it. Mandy flicked through a magazine. She was frowning and restless. Dr. Adam looked at her again. Why not take that back to your grandmother's, he suggested. Mandy nodded. She was thinking, thinking what to do to find homes for those kittens. But she picked up the little magazine and drifted off down the hallway. Where are you off to, her mom asked as she came in through the front door. She'd just gotten back from her yoga class, relaxed and smiling as usual. I have to clean out the rabbit hutch. Then I'm off to grandma and grandpa's, Mandy said absentmindedly. She waved the magazine, still deep in thought. Say hello for me, Dr. Emily shouted after Mandy, but she got no answer. Mandy let Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail out into the run in the backyard while she cleaned out their hutch and laid down fresh straw. Satisfied that their water was clean and they were safely bedded down for the night, she set off up the lane to her grandparents' cottage. In the cool evening light, the mass of white lilacs in her grandfather's garden gave off a strong, sweet scent. Even at this late hour, he would be out in his greenhouse puttering. Hi, Grandpa, she said with a wave. She stood to wait for him by the new camper sitting proudly in their side driveway. Hello, sweetie, his face slipped up and he came out to greet her. He slid the greenhouse door closed. Come in, come in. Your grandma's inside warming, your grandma's inside writing letters. He showed her in through the kitchen and into the cozy back room. The lamps cast a yellow glow and the flower curtains were closed. Hello, Mandy's grandmother gave her a wide smile. Guess what I'm doing? Mandy sat down opposite her at the table, writing a letter. She loved visiting her grandparents. Even when she felt down, like now, somehow they cheered her up. Not just any old letter, her grandmother announced. This one is special. This one is to the prime minister. Oh, Mandy tried not to sound too surprised. She was used to her grandmother knitting impossible cardigan patterns and making gallons of rhubarb and ginger jam, not writing letters to prime ministers. What is it about, she asked. It's about our post office. There are nasty rumors in the village that they want to close it down. Mr. McFarland told me about it when I went in to pick up some stamps earlier today. Why do they want to close it? Mandy couldn't imagine life in Welford without their little post office. Grandma raised her glasses onto her forehead. They say it's too expensive to run. Too expensive, I ask you? Honestly, they don't know what they're talking about. We have to stop them. So Dorothy's writing to the prime minister. Always go to the top is what I say, Mandy's grandfather said. On her best note paper, of course. He winked and handed her a glass of homemade lemonade. On my official note paper, I'm writing as chairperson of the Welford Women's Club. Mandy looked impressed. Even the prime minister would have to listen to her grandmother when she was on her high horse. They won't close the post office, she said. Not after they've read your letter. They all chuckled. You've spoiled my concentration, her grandmother said. She put pen and paper aside. She looked at Mandy's fidgety hands. Anyway, you have something on your mind, I can tell. Mandy didn't need a second invitation. The story of Walton and her kittens poured out. How she was the school cat, but Mandy felt she must take charge. How Mr. Williams had no heart at all. How she, Mandy, had to find homes for the kittens. Her grandparents tut-tutted and nodded in all the right places, in all the right places. Mandy paused at the critical point and took a deep breath. Grandma, she said, trying to sound very reasonable. I've been thinking. Yes, her grandmother gave her a sideways look. Well, I've been thinking that a cat would be the perfect thing for you here in the cottage. I mean, it's lonely this far up the lane and you hardly see any neighbors. And a cat is a really good company for, she faltered and blushed, for old people. 
Her grandfather finished the sentence. He grinned. He was 65, a gardener, a walker, a bicycle rider. He was fit as a fiddle. Yes, she admitted. Anyway, they're sweet, clean animals and you don't have to fuss over them. They look after themselves and, whoa, her grandfather said, hold on. He looked helplessly at his wife. Look, honey, her grandmother spoke gently. It's a good idea. And it's very good of you to be thinking of us like this. It really is. You're our beautiful, warm-hearted girl. You know that. Mandy saw a great big butt looming on the horizon. Yes, yeah, she said, feeling her heart sink. Her grandfather took over. But we've just bought our camper, you know, our retirement treat. He jerked his head sideways. There she stands in the driveway, all shiny and new, waiting to take us to the Italian Alps, to Provence, to Portugal, to Scarborough the day after tomorrow, her grandmother put in. Mandy nodded. So? So we won't be at home to look after a pet as much as we were when your grandpa wasn't working. We'll be out on the open road, the freeway, with the wind in our hair and the sun on our faces. Mandy was shocked. She wondered if she'd ever see her grandparents again. Not all the time, her grandfather corrected. I still need to keep an eye on my tomatoes. But too much of the time to be able to take in one of your kittens, her grandmother said finally. And Mandy had to accept that. Smokey was the one she'd been planning for them to have with his perky face and his way of pushing the other three kittens out of the way when they were feeding. Now Smokey wouldn't be sunning himself on her grandfather's patio after all. Mandy tried to swallow her disappointment. But, her grandmother said, sweeping stray hair up into the bun back of her head, we can still help. Okay, we're going to stop there and we'll begin on page 38 tomorrow. Thank you so much, second graders. Hope you're doing well. Take care, okay? Bye-bye now.